So how do we find the equation of the line of reflection that takes us from the pre-image P to the image P prime? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to go through two examples together. Let's dive in. So when we think about a line of reflection, it's the line that if you were to fold this point over that line, it would match to this new point P prime. And one thing you want to be aware of is that when you look at a line of reflection, wherever that point is, you want to go perpendicular to that line of reflection, and then you want to go the same distance on the other side of that line, uh, again, perpendicular. These two distances are going to be the same. It's kind of like if you were standing in front of a mirror, right? Like if I stand a foot in front of the mirror, it looks like my reflection is a foot behind the mirror, but notice that it's a perpendicular distance. It's that shortest distance. And so what we have here is this line is really the perpendicular bisector of the segment that connects the pre-image and the image. So that's what we're going to be doing is finding that perpendicular bisector equation. So we've got a few formulas you might want to write down or refresh on. The midpoint formula, the slope formula, and the point-slope form of the equation of a line. But let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoint between P and P prime. So the way that we do that is we average the x's and we average the y's. So we're going to add the two x coordinates together. So this is going to be negative 5 plus 3 divided by 2. Same thing with the y's. 4 plus negative 6 divided by 2. Let's simplify. This comes out to negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. And over here we get negative 2 divided by 2, which is also negative 1. So that's our midpoint. That's our halfway point here between these two points. Now we can even graph it here on our graph. Negative 1, negative 1 is right there. So if we were to draw a line, it's going to go right through that midpoint. Okay. But now what we want to do is we want to find the slope of this line. And so to find the slope, we're going to use our slope formula, which is the difference in the y coordinates. So 4 minus negative 6 divided by the difference in the x-coordinates, that's negative 5 minus 3. Now be careful with the signs here. When you subtract, that's like adding the opposite. And so now you can see this is going to be 10 over negative 8, which is equal to negative 5 fourths if we reduce. Now that's the slope of this line, but what we want is the perpendicular slope. Okay, so it forms a right angle. And to find the perpendicular slope, we take the opposite reciprocal of this slope here. So the opposite reciprocal means that it's going to be the opposite sign, so it's going to be positive. I'm going to flip that fraction over. That's going to be 4 over 5. Now, if this was a whole number like 4, you can think of that as like 4 over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself, and then take the reciprocal. Okay, so now we have everything we need. We have our perpendicular slope. We have the point that the line is going to go through, which is the midpoint. We can write the equation in the point-slope form. Just put in your slope for m and your point for x1 and y1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y minus negative 1 equals the slope, which is 4 fifths, times x minus negative 1. Again, when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite, adding the opposite. This is in point-slope form. Let's rearrange it into the slope-intercept form, the y equals mx plus b form. We'll do that by distributing. Okay, so that comes out to 4 fifths x plus 4 fifths. Here I'm just going to subtract 1 from both sides to get y by itself. Okay, so now we get 4 fifths x. Now, negative 1, this is like negative 1 over 1. I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 5 to get common denominators. So we have 4 fifths minus 5 fifths, which is negative 1 fifth. So that's the equation of our perpendicular bisector, which again is the line of reflection that we're folding over to get from P to P prime. Okay, so let's graph this just so we can visualize. So a y-intercept of negative 1 fifth is right about here. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch that in roughly, and it's going to be perpendicular to this line. So it should look something like this. Now my graph is not exactly perfect because of the spacing on both the x and y axis, but you have a rough idea here of what's happening. We're just folding this 
over this line and we're getting that mirror image. Let's take a look at another example. See if you can do the second example on your own and we'll go through it together. Okay, try number two on your own. We've got our pre-image P negative eight zero and our image, which is our new point, P prime four negative two. So how do you find that line of reflection, the equation of the line of reflection? Go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, I wanna remind you if you don't know already uh, that I've got two courses for sale. I have an algebra one and an algebra two slash college algebra video course for sale that walk you through those courses step-by-step step with explanation of the concepts, practice problems, and problems that you can do on your own as well that we end up going through together. So excellent courses if you need help going through those uh, courses or just want to review uh, a little bit of your uh, math from before. Let's go over this last example together. So how do we find that line of reflection? First step is to find the midpoint. So the midpoint, again, is an average of the x's, average of the y's. Now, some teachers um, will say, don't graph it. They want you to do it all in your head. You know, They want you just to be able to do it without having to draw a picture. And mainly the reason I think they say that is because they just want you to be more efficient at it, and they want you to understand the concepts. But you know, initially, it might be good to draw a picture, and then later, you can just kind of visualize what's happening without having to draw a diagram. But the midpoint we can see we're, again, adding the x's, negative eight plus four, divided by two, same thing with the y's, zero plus negative two, divided by two. So that's giving us a midpoint of negative four, divided by two, which is negative two, and this is zero plus negative two is negative two, divided by two is negative one. So that's our midpoint. I'll just sketch it here so we can, again, just kind of help to visualize what's happening here. So it looks something like, like that, roughly. Okay, and now we wanna find the slope between P and P prime. So again, using our slope formula, uh, we've got Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Again, be careful with the subtraction. That's like adding the opposite, adding the opposite. So we get uh, negative two over 12, which is equal to negative one sixth. Now that's the slope of this line. We want the perpendicular line, so we're gonna take the opposite reciprocal. So the way that we do that is we just change the sign from negative to positive. If this is positive, I'd make this one negative, and then we flip that fraction, so this is just gonna be positive six. So now we have the slope. We have the point that our line of reflection is gonna go through, that's the midpoint. We can make use of the point-slope form of the equation of a line to get us started. So this is gonna be, y minus negative one equals the slope six times x minus x one. Again, when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite, adding the opposite. Okay, I'm gonna distribute the six. I'm gonna put this into slope intercept form. That's the y equals mx plus b form. And then I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. So we get y equals six x plus 11 and that's the equation of our line of reflection. Now, you can see here that 11 is like way up here. So basically this line's going like this. Okay, that's our line of reflection. It's perpendicular. And again, if you fold P over this line, you're gonna end up with P prime. So great job if you were able to follow this video. If you wanna see more examples or you just want the opportunity to practice a little bit more, I'll put a link to a video I did right there talking about perpendicular bisectors and finding the equation of perpendicular bisectors, which is quite similar to what we did in this video. So follow me over that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.